You are listening to a bonus episode of Love Your Practice. I just threw it together at the last minute with less help than normal because it's a few days before Christmas, but this issue came up and I really wanted to talk about it. But that is why you're not hearing my new fancy introduction or my theme music. And next week we'll get back to our regularly scheduled program. So recently I found out that I was being very publicly criticized and it was a painful experience. It hurt like hell. But I realized even as I was walking through my pain that it was creating a teaching moment both for myself and for you all, my listeners. So I am here today to talk to you about how I processed my hurt because I'm hoping that it will be helpful for you the next time you find yourself being criticized. Now, when you create and own a business, which is most of you, my listeners, a lot of you have either purchased or started a dental practice. And you're just out there trying to find your people, trying to make a difference and put yourself out there. And that can feel exposed, right? You're letting someone, you're letting everybody see you so that your people can find you. And I feel a little bit like a hairless cat sometimes. Like you can see every wrinkle that I have and every place that's supposed to look fluffy because it's, it's so... Like, I can't help you find me unless I'm out there, right? So many of you have experienced this feeling of being exposed. Because when you start or buy a practice, first of all, you're trying to find your patients. And you also have employees who are looking at you. It kind of feels like everyone's looking like, is she going to measure up? And then, of course, we know all the bad things about ourselves. So we can imagine all of these people watching us and we pretend in our minds that they're thinking the things that we know about ourselves that aren't right. So for example, when employee quits, um, when, it, when I've had employees quit, it's done a hard thing for my ego because I start reliving every moment where maybe I didn't treat them well or I should have led better and I'm, I have no idea what that person's thinking. I'm actually only knowing what I think in that moment. I am pretty sure that there's a club of people who used to work for me who get together for drinks sometimes. Maybe they make jokes about, or um, not jokes, but like um, complain about the things that I did wrong or make fun of the jokes that I used to tell the patients all the time, that type of thing. And then also as dental practice owners, sometimes we have patients who call and complain or they leave the practice They go to the next dentist and they say, oh, well, my last dentist, blah, blah, blah. Have you ever had this happen where you get a new patient that you find out is actually a former patient and they start telling you about their old dentist and you realize that they're telling you about themselves? (laughs) I mean, ourselves, that's happened to me a couple of times where they're like, yeah, she was just, I don't know. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she's talking about me. (laughs) that's happened before or this one this is much more common is when some of you or me gets a bad review online that one sucks because again you're having to revisit all the thoughts about yourself to see if maybe they're right it can be hard to face this when you're a dentist because you're just out there trying to help and it can be very easy to slip into a mode where we are imagining these situations with ourselves in the very worst light. And the reason this criticism hurts so much, what we think about it is because when someone doesn't like us, we think that it's about us as individuals and we're afraid that they're right. But listen to me for a second. When people compliment or like us, we use that as proof that we are okay and that feels nice, right? But there's an opposite side to that, which is if that's how we base our opinion about ourselves, then when someone criticizes ourselves, there is this fear deep inside us that maybe that person is right. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about how I processed this pain that I felt and touch a little bit on the fact that if we can switch our brains to be loving ourselves just as we are, that we don't need compliments and we don't have to be afraid of criticism in order to continue to feel good about ourselves. All right, 
So now as a coach trying to hang my shingle out, what I find is that I have a message and the best way for me to get that message out for you all is kind of like I'm standing on a corner in a busy street singing my song. And most people who hear the song, they're in a hurry, it's not their song, they're on their way to something else and they just walk on by. But the people who need me are the ones who stop and listen to my song. And then there will always be at least a few who either laugh at my song or say that I'm terrible and that I'm doing it wrong. So what happened to me this week is that I had, oops, where did my, where's my spot? Sorry. Do, do, do. I was just on my corner singing my song when some very successful, smart people that I respect and admire within our dental community went out of their way to criticize me in a very public space. And in essence, what they said about me was that I didn't give very good advice. And also I was accused of taking something that doesn't belong to me. And I was really surprised that someone cared enough about not liking me to speak out against me. And that really got me going. I was imagining all of the bad things that someone would say about me. And I went through a very quintessentially human process of looking at all of my actions through the worst lenses. So today on this bonus episode, I'm going to be talking you through the journey of the feelings I walk through in the hopes that it will help you the next time you find yourself being criticized. So when I first found out about this blatant criticism of me, my feelings were instantaneous. It's actually really amazing how quickly our mind can process those thoughts of feeling inadequate. The first thing that I felt was actually shame. So it was kind of like a, did I do something wrong? Um, Did I cause myself to lose my standing in my pack? And what I mean when I say that is originally humans were pack animals and um, we had our tribe, right? And the way we survived was to stick with the tribe. And there's an evolutionary place to drive there to fit in with the group and not bring shame on ourselves. We all experience that a lot when we're like 13 and we're in middle school and we just want to be accepted and liked by our peers. And we're experiencing that feeling that nature gave us to try to fit in. And for me, the first thing that I needed to do, and I did this, was I experienced fully the physical sensations of what it means to feel shame. I named the feeling And then I described how it felt. And for me, the shame felt like a heavy, sharp, heavy punch to the lower chest or the upper stomach. And also I felt like a physical desire to hide. And I felt a flushing hot, hot face. And then in my mind, I was thinking something like, okay, people are talking about me. They know the secret. They know that I suck. And what I want to do right now is kind of an exercise in um, deflating shame. And that is that I want to tell you some of the things that I'm embarrassed about, about me. And this is something you can do too when you're feeling shame. is just to kind of make a mental note in your mind of the things that you feel embarrassed about. And just say them out loud. So it's like a public exercise. You don't have to do yours public. But um, I'm disempowering this shame that I'm feeling by making making it public for myself. So here are some things you could easily call me out on if you wanted to. Okay, well, um, I got married really young and naive and then I got divorced. So I'm divorced, you could um, criticize that about me. I literally, as soon as I got divorced, dated a man who had a criminal record and I knew about it. <laughs> still dated him. In fact, I got engaged to him. Although it was part of that I would put on him because he was very manipulative, but still I went along with it. 
Uh, when I was a kid, especially, you know, elementary school, middle school, but even high school, I was not popular. I was different than the other kids. There were seven children in my family. I didn't have guest jeans or an esprit bag. And until I was 13, we lived in this really small town that had a liberal arts college in it and all these super cute Victorian homes. People lived there. Um, they had money. But we drove... We we lived in an old falling apart house and my mom drove a van and I'm not talking about a minivan. I'm talking about a full size van from like 1979 and this van backfired all the time. So my mom would start it and then it would make this really loud bang. <laughs> oh my goodness. It was so embarrassing. Okay, moving on. I have cellulite on my stomach like in that place you know like my upper abdomen where most of the time you see smoothness mine's bumpy and I will say I have a pretty nice shape I'm I'm curvy in the right places and I have a nice waistline but when you see the skin you see it's all bumpy on my stomach and not only that but I have balding areas on my scalp I started to lose my hair five or six years ago and by the way, I started using Rogaine, and I think it's pretty good. It's been filling in some of those um, really thin spots. But in addition to having bald spots, I also have whiskers on my chin and my neck. <laughs> and I have stretch marks, even from way before I had babies, like because I was fairly overweight in high school. So I have stretch marks pretty much all over my body, the backs of my arms, my legs, my buttocks. There's stretch marks all over. Uh, one time when I was a new dentist, I pulled the wrong tooth. Now, I will say in my defense that it was a baby tooth and um, the orthodontist had not sent me the letter, but still, you cannot imagine the shame that I felt when I realized I'd pulled the wrong tooth. Um, here's another one. My coaching business is growing, but at this point, mostly it's just me dreaming of helping. <laughs> Many other coaches and um and consultants within dentistry and outside of dentistry have a bigger following and they make more and their podcast has more downloads and they have bigger Facebook groups and more income and more consistent content. And along those lines, my dental practice is pretty busy, but I still owe a lot of money for it, especially after this year. Uh, we bought the building that the dental practice is within and from the PPP and the EIDL and all that stuff, I'm like, okay, here comes some more debt. And I'm 47. <laughs> and I really hate it when employees that I like end up quitting and leaving the practice. That one feels especially shameful. So I have told you these things because as I say them out loud, as I say what my brain is worried about being unlikable for me it's easier for me to say that actually none of those things is that big of a deal and I'm experiencing the shameful sensation and by the time I got to the end of my list I was actually feeling quite a bit less shame and more humor in myself but I wasn't ready for humor when I experienced these feelings earlier this week in fact the next thing that I felt was actually sadness and what I want to do again is I want to process this kind of like I did the shame. I had this thought in my head as I felt the sadness and the thought was I thought that I could make a difference but I'm not making a difference. And there was a physical association with that feeling which was that it felt like darkness and I know that I don't know if that's really a physical sensation but it felt physical to me. It felt like a cloud that sat over my brain and blocked me from being able to access my happy thoughts. And I said to myself, I feel disappointed in myself. I have let people down. I have made mistakes. And like in my mind, I'm, I'm listing some of the biggies. I haven't followed the rules. I see my vulnerability like the underbelly of a dragon, like everyone's just looking at the weak parts of my belly. I dreamed I could help, 
But there are people saying that I'm not helpful and that I'm taking what's theirs. And maybe they're right. Maybe I'm not that helpful. That's what they're saying. And they make more and they have more influence. And so they must know that I'm really not that great. And maybe I should give up on trying to help people and just go do some more class twos and crown preps and stuff like that. Now, what I want you to see is that it's really important, if, especially if you're having a negative emotion that you don't want to experience, in order for it to really go away, we kind of have to sit with it. We have to sit with that feeling. We have to describe it. We have to feel it. We have to look at what thoughts are creating the feeling. They have to be experienced in order for them to pass all the way to the other six, other side. If we try to ignore them or resist them, then they're just going to keep on coming back up. Sort of like you have the feeling is a beach ball and you're trying to hold it underwater. If you're holding it underwater, as soon as you turn around, it's going to pop up and you're going to feel it again. So what I did in this, in this exercise is to explain how I consciously felt the emotion. And this gives you the best chance of returning back to whatever it is you want to feel, which for me is probably going to be love because I usually choose love because it really is the best feeling to feel. I started thinking about myself and what I would rather experience about me and I decided that I would rather feel unconditional love for myself. I want to know that I can love myself even when someone is going out of their way to say that I'm not that great. If I can feel that, then I can continue to put my help out there for the people who need it. And I can let whoever else wants to belittle or criticize me, I can let them do that. I can let them have their own problems. I can let them have their own opinions and I give them permission to not approve. And I can even wish those people well, which I honestly do. Because if I want to stay in a space where I'm wishing them ill, then I'm keeping myself in an unhappy place. Whereas if I'm like, you know what? I honestly wish you the best. Then I can turn or back around and start focusing on me on my message and on helping you. This frees me up for being me and for, and I know that I am meant to help people. I know it deep in my bones. So I want to talk a little bit about having unconditional love for yourself because I would hope that after you face the criticism that someone has given you, that you can decide that what you would prefer to feel after you pass through the unpleasant emotions is unconditional love for yourself. Any emotion that we feel is rooted or created by our thoughts. So if we want to change how we feel about ourselves, we have to look about we have to look at what we believe. And a belief is just a thought that we think over and over again. And then we need to reframe if we aren't believing helpful things about us. So what I did, which is a helpful reframing exercise, is I wrote a letter to myself. And this is something that you could do too as you're trying to move past the sadness or the shame into self-love. So, and I'm just gonna read this letter that I wrote to myself, okay? Dear Laura, I would like to thank you for having these dreams of helping people, of wanting to be a dentist and have an art where you fix body parts and you calm minds and communicate well and lead your team with gratitude. I'm so glad that you set me up. You chose a skill that communicates well and compensates well and where your income can grow commensurate with your ambition and your ability to serve. And I just want to, I'm not reading right now, but I just want to say as an aside, when you are writing your letter to yourself, make sure that you thank 
her for how she has set you up for success in this part of your life. Now, continuing on, I'm also thrilled that with you that you chose to dream in a new way two and a half years ago when you learned for yourself some essential, helpful information that changed how you practice and lead. You decided this information must be shared with your peers and you dreamed of being a coach. Now, you have learned recently that when you put yourself out in the public eye, not everyone will support you. Many will be indifferent and a few will come out actively speaking against you. This is uncomfortable and forces you to think about your own faults, big and small. This criticism you face will be a price you pay for being public enough to help other female dentists. People may say that you are not that good, but you can still choose love. You are strong and can receive the criticism and other people's opinions, and they will not stop you from trying to help more people. Laura, you don't have to be perfect to be worthy of love. The individuals you love are certainly not perfect and you are worthy of love with all of your strengths and faults. You've got your brain, your ideas, your communication skills, you've got your lumps and bumps, you're growing hair where you don't want it and missing hair in more essential areas, you've got your perfect, perfect crown margin preps, and your contacts that open up after you do a crown on two or 15. And all of these parts are worthy of love right now. Laura, give those who do not approve of you free permission to dislike you. The more open you are to the idea of being disliked, the easier it will be to act like yourself. The more open you are to the idea of being disliked, sorry, that was a repeat, <laughs> mistake the easier it will be to know that there's not a single person on the planet who likes everyone and it's okay that there are people on this planet who dislike you. This actually helps you know that it's okay to be yourself and love yourself. And that feeling of loving yourself is much more effective at moving you forward in your lofty goals to help even more people. You have felt your shame and your sadness. You have my permission to move on, to forgive and to love. With all the love, yourself. <laughs> so I'm almost done, ladies. And thank you for sticking with me while I wrote that letter. When you face criticism in your life, whether it be gossip or a bad review, follow these steps. Feel your emotion. Name it, describe it, sit with it. Consider that your emotion didn't come from the criticism itself. It came from your own thoughts, which frees you to have new thoughts. Ask yourself what you would rather feel and use your brain to create that feeling. You can write a letter to yourself or you could create a mantra or list things that show you that you deserve to feel that emotion for yourself. And then ladies, lather, rinse and repeat because your brain is going to try several times to pull you back into feeling ashamed or sad. And if you need help, please reach out to me. This is what I do and I can help you process it. Okay. Now I have to say my own podcast ending because like I said earlier, this is a homemade episode. You have been listening to Love Your Practice with Dr. Laura Mock. Oh, I would love to meet you. Join my growing private Facebook group that's just for female dentists who own dental practices. Search in groups on Facebook for Love Your Practice, or you can just friend me, Laura Mock, and I'll add you to the group. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time.